Happy Monday, friends. You're watching video 98, and today I'm in the great community of Capron Ridge. Not to be confused with Capron Trace, which is another community that sells about 4% of the transactions that I'll be discussing in today's video. And PS for sellers, that's great news for you. Let's just jump right into the information. In 99.9999% of the listing appointments I go on, the sellers and myself, we discuss pricing. Now, this makes a lot of sense because most sellers want to know how much money they're gonna be making at the end of the day, so it takes up bulk of the conversation. Now, if you know me, you know I like to dive deep into the analytical side of things, and any listing appointment I go on, I basically shower the client with information. Now, I talk about everything from strategy, I look up history, and I look up other properties or comparables that sold for what and for why. So today I wanted to take a similar approach with all of you and I decided to look at Brevard County and look for trends as far as reductions are concerned because we're now in a point of the season where we're seeing a lot more reductions. You've seen the market slow down a little bit and I've had a lot of questions about that. So today I analyzed 184 properties and I was looking for historical trends as far as pricing is concerned. I looked up three primary metrics. I looked up the price, what it sold at, which makes a lot of sense. I looked up the days on the market so how long it was on the market before it actually sold and then I dove a little bit deeper and looked at the history of things and looked for when that first time was that they made a price reduction. Now to separate all of that data into really two main groups I had to separate it by days on market which I chose at 60 days. I'll jump into that a little bit later but let's jump into the data so you can see why I did what I did. So here's a snapshot of the search that I used for today's analysis. I searched between 520 and 192 on the mainland. I went back six months and pulled the closed units that were priced between 300 and $350,000. And I want a property that was older than 2017 as far as the build date is concerned. And I did this because new construction tends to skew the days on the market. Now this snapshot shows the properties that were on the market for at least 60 days. I used the same criteria as we started off with, but I wanted to dive deeper into properties that were on the market for at least two months. After crunching together all 52 listings, it turns out that the median cumulative days on the market is 118, but what I was really focused in on was that sold to original list ratio of 91.745%. After running those numbers, this is where things got a little complex. So I went to each listing and I pulled the details of the report. I then went through the history of each listing and I was looking for trends in the history. So mainly I was looking at the days on the market and then looking at that first time that they made a price reduction and I was taking note of that. I then compiled all that data and it turns out that sellers in these circumstances on average waited 39 days before making their initial price reduction somewhere between 2 and 4%. Now most of these sellers made multiple price reductions and they ended up selling at about 91.75% of that original list price. I then focused on the group of listings that sold between 0 and 60 days which actually make up 73% of the listings in today's analysis. The CDOM came in at 10 days and that sold to original list ratio came in at 97%. Same order of business here as prior, so we crunched all the numbers and it turns out that on average, these sellers waited 17 days before making their initial price reduction of somewhere between 2 and 4%. Now, something that was interesting was that 72% of these listings did not need to reduce. That was because they priced their homes properly and they ended up selling in a remarkably fast time and there was no need to make any pricing adjustments. Now, if you've made it through all that information, I appreciate the fact that you're still here. So why does pricing strategy matter? Well. There has to be a strategy to it, otherwise you end up like those properties that sit on the market for a very long time and you are considered fortunate to sell your property. Now if you are meeting with a real estate agent and you are not discussing strategy as far as what you should enter the market at, where it becomes high risk, where that sweet little spot is, there's probably a problem with the person you're looking to hire. Now I'm not saying you should hire me, but I'm saying that as a real estate professional we have access to tons of information at our fingertips and we need to be utilizing it so that we can further advise you to how to sell your house for the most appropriate dollar. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Um, if you have any questions about why I'm in a playground, it's because it's quiet, it's beautiful, I'm in some shade, and Capron Ridge is awesome. 
and with a kid, this is probably something he would like, so I'm thinking about this community. But if you live in here, remember, 4% of the transactions out of the 184 that we talked about earlier are selling in this community. So if you're a seller, that's a really great sign for you. It means there's high demand. So thank you guys very much for watching. You know the drill. I'll see you next Monday.